The Tale of the Noble Knight by Joseph Holloway Once upon a time there lived a good and fair queen who was known all throughout the land as Queen Caitlin the Fair. As many kings and queens so often do, the queen had many knights who served her, giving her wise counsel, fierce protection, and valuable advice about the day-to-day -day matters of her lands. In Queen Caitlin's court there were many such knights. However, there was one knight in particular who stood above the rest. His name was Sir Lionel the Noble, and this is his story. One day, the Queen was panic-stricken with worry when she learned that a village close to the castle was being pillaged and plundered by vicious goblins. Turning to her knights, she asked what she should do. The knights quickly started mumbling in thought to each other. Then after a short while, a knight stepped forward named Sir William the Clever. He suggested the Queen offer a reward for any peasant folk or knights brave enough to fight them off. Another knight stepped forward. This one was Sir Jasper the Bold. He suggested they all ride in and slaughter the whole lot of them in glorious battle. Then another knight stepped forward. His name was Sir Lyme. Before he could suggest what he thought they should do, the others silenced him. Apologies, my queen. Lionel speaks out of turn, interjected Sir Gregor the Brave. Aye, your majesty, he is our newest knight and has not earned his title, spoke Sir Peter the Just. The queen looked at Lionel, a handsome young man with ocean blue eyes, stepping backward and staring at the floor. The queen then spoke. I will offer a reward for the knights among you who are successful in driving out this threat from my lands. The knights did not need to be told twice. They gathered up their swords and left in excited gabble. Sir Lionel, however, was troubled. He felt that they knew nothing about what they were going into and were acting very brashly by riding out to war as the only option. But being a new knight, he gathered his sword and armour and followed the others to war. The large group of knights eventually arrived atop a grassy hill overlooking the village. Sure enough, they saw goblins, horrible and ugly looking, running to and fro. Looking on, Sir Lionel saw the enormous windmill was set ablaze. Look, brothers, look! The peasants are fighting back the beasts too, said Sir Percy the Cunning, pointing his sword toward the village where a group of people armed with pitchforks were chasing off a bigger group of goblins. Sir Jasper drew his sword. Come, lads, death or glory! Kicking his horse, which reared up and then bolted down the hill. You heard him, brothers. Onward, kill the goblins, shouted Sir Percy, who also drew his sword. With a mighty roar, the group of knights charged into the fray, closely followed by Lionel, who still felt like something was terribly wrong. The cry of battle rang out long, until eventually one last goblin was tied up and gagged. The peasants cried out in triumph, running over to the brave knights who saved them. Come, my lords, a noble feast awaits us back at the castle. We will split the reward between us evenly after all that we have done, as all have done their duty, and of course, compensation to the peasant folk. To which all the knights roared in agreement, and as for this unlucky beast, we will make it regret the day it invaded this goodly village. With that, they trotted off, accompanied by adoring peasants. Lionel, however, stayed behind, gazing out at the devastation before him. Then suddenly, 
Something grabbed his leg, and he instinctively raised his sword high, ready to strike. A tiny goblin lay before him, so small and weak, clutching his leg feebly, blood running down its face. Sir, have you seen my mother? Lionel's heart froze. Then the tiny creature's eyes glazed over, and it lay very still. Following the blood trail of the small goblin to a demolished house, Lionel saw inside the corpse of a goblin clutching several other tiny goblins, which were also unmoving and still. Lionel knelt on the black soot-trodden ground. Good God, what have we done? he said. Meanwhile, back at the castle, the knights and others arrived with the bound and gagged goblin, throwing the creature down before the queen. Well, beast, what have you to say for yourself, she said, as the gag was removed. But before the goblin could speak, the doors burst open to reveal Lionel, sword drawn. Stop, he shouted, walking toward the queen. Lionel, have you gone mad? The queen was about to sentence the culprit said Sir William incredulously. Good, said Lionel, raising his sword to the leader of the peasant's throat. There is your culprit, he said, the tip of his blade tapping the bandit's chin. That, my queen, is the true raider. We attacked a goblin's village, and these bandits, these ruffians, lied, pretending to be villagers to be compensated after raiding the defenceless village. The other knights looked at each other, seeming to be unconvinced. You're mad, Lionel, said Sir Jasper roughly, raising his sword to strike. But Lionel was too quick, and dropping his own sword, stood in front of the goblin, arms outstretched. Kill this creature, and you will have to kill me. It is no less than I or any of us deserve for the shame of this blatant prejudice. Jasper growled, Move aside, boy. I will not. I am a knight of this realm, chosen by our beloved queen to fight for and uphold the weak, and you will show me respect. Jasper and the other knights looked shocked. My queen, Lionel eventually said, I slaughtered an entire innocent village of goblins in favour of human bandits. If anyone deserves your judgment, it is me, and not this poor creature. And with that, Lionel picked up his sword and knelt before her, gazing into her eyes. Caitlin studied the young man's face and looked deep into the ocean blue eyes and saw the truth. As did I, said William, taking a knee. And I, said Percy. Forgive us, poor goblin. One by one, each knight fell to their knees, bowing their head in shame, until Sir Jasper, left speechless, kneeled and said, Your Majesty, we have wronged both you and this creature greatly. I am ashamed. With that, he took his sword and beheaded the bandit leader's smirking face, which fell to a thud on the stone floor. Queen Caitlin stepped forward and placed one hand on Lionel's head and the other on the goblin's tear-soaked cheek. Rise, Sir Lionel the Noble, Knight Commander of my army, and rise, goblin. May you forever be compensated for the wrong done you by my knights. The other bandits were taken away and executed the next morning, and the knights under the supervision of the new goblin leader, started to rebuild the demolished village, as more and more goblins emerged out of hiding. As for Lionel, he eventually married Queen Caitlin a year after his promotion, and together had four children, who grew to be just as noble as their father ever was. <laughs>